with uh, two great guests and a great cause that they're going with. We've got Tim Egan, who's the president of Roseland Community Hospital, which was one of the first hospitals to treat COVID-19 on the south side of the city. And a uh, good friend of the show, John Vincent, who you may recognize as one of the uh, many anthem singers, but the one that holds the longest notes possible uh, when he sings along. They're teaming up to help out with this fundraiser. Uh, Tim, can you see us right now? Mr. Egan. Yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear. All oh, right. We so you guys have started uh, this fundraiser for team, we're calling it Team Test Truck. Tell us a little bit about it. So we've, uh, here at the New Roseland Hospital, we've been the tip of the sword and the fight to flatten the curve of COVID-19 since the very beginning. We've tested over 12,000 individuals using both neurology screening and nasal swab testing. And we've done that in front of our hospital, in our lobby, in tents, in our uh, emergency department uh, parking lot. And we've done it at the Cook County Jail. We've done it at the Fraternal Order of Police. We've done it at individual corporations. So we've been out and about with our van and our mobile team testing all over the city of Chicago. So wherever there's been a need and a request, uh, the new rules and community hospitals answered the call for COVID-19 testing. Why is it so important? I mean, obviously knowledge is power in terms of where this is and who has it or who doesn't. Uh, is it a matter of people that have to be symptomatic to get the test or you just go in, into certain places where like, hey, we got to test a lot of people at once? Why is that so important in, in battling this? Well, we need to know who is, who's had exposure to COVID-19, who's currently testing positive. Knowledge is power. The only way you can defeat this virus is to make sure that we are providing the barriers around our community members, such as uh, quarantine when they need a quarantine, staying away from family members when they are positive. So this testing that we've provided has been invaluable in the fight to battle COVID-19. And we've done a lot of first responders. Over 3,000 of our tests have been the first responders. So our city's policemen, our firemen, our Cook County sheriffs. And that is a fact that we are extremely proud of, that we can help those who are protecting us. Mm -hmm. Is this the, the, the um, test truck behind you, the team test truck? It sure is. It's, been, it's our, uh, our new rules of community hospital dental van that we've converted into our COVID-19 testing mobile. Oh, How wow. does it work? How long does it take? What's the process? So the process is, uh, there's two different processes. You get the blood draw, which is a serology uh, test that tests for your antibodies. And then there's the nasal swab that tests for immediate exposure. Both of those tests are done by Rolleson Community Hospital with our partners, American Medical Labs, within the walls of the new Rolleson Hospital. So little old Rolleson Hospital, the woefully underfunded safety net hospital for decades, is leading the charge testing within our own lab. Those tests take about 24 to 48 hours to turn around, and we're getting the results out in about 72 hours. What oh, made wow. you guys under, decide to undertake this such a massive uh, burden, really? Well, we know that there's a community need, and this community has been on the south side of Chicago and Rosen has been divested in for decades. And let me tell you that uh, as other hospitals are shuttering, as other hospitals in the south side are, sh are closing off services, we're increasing services and we're remaining committed to services like OB. The testing, our community was living in fear when this COVID-19 hit. So we answered the call to meet that fear with, with professional testing that is, is done wonders for that overcoming the fear and getting people the treatment they needed. Joining us now also is uh, John Vincent. John, you're a little bit sideways for us if you don't mind rotating your phone or your device the other way. Uh, John, uh, you probably recognize best as one of the Cubs anthem singers who holds Land of the Free as long as anyone in the history of singing that song has done. John, are you with us? Can you hear us? I'm with you guys. I can hear you. Thank you for having me. Sorry about that. No, you're good, John. It's, it's so great to see you again. And uh, we miss you at the ballpark, of course, but you're teaming up to help drive awareness of what they're doing and uh, with this with the truck. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is great. I heard about this testing truck for COVID uh, that uh, they said came across with uh, the kids from Columbia College, if I'm not mistaken. And, and, and that's fantastic. You know, this is a time where everybody just needs to come together and help each other out. And that's what it sounds like they're doing. And uh, I love that stuff. That stuff just makes me smile. How are you getting involved? What's your, what's your role in all of this? Uh, I was asked to just be a part of this, just to come on the show today. Uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff, going to nursing homes and singing. I have one today, two today, that I'll be singing outside of um, two nursing homes in the Chicago area 
and just bringing uh, some joy to some seniors who've been, you know, locked in lockdown and everything like that. So I think people have seen that that's been viral. Uh, so what they've done is, is reached out. And this is one of the things that uh, I was uh, reached out to talk about. And I think it's great. Anytime you do something positive in a community for humanity, you're doing the right thing. Tim, I imagine that people just raising awareness is one of the most important things just to get people to the truck or, and really just to get these tests undertaken. Well, you know, in the beginning, uh, we thought we'd test about 200 people the first day. Uh, we didn't need a lot of publicity. We tested over 500 people. So wow. once word spread that we were doing this testing, people were lining up for this test. And how important do you think it is the fact that this is on the south side, that it's in the heart of the Roseland community? Massively important. You know, we're in the Roseland community is 7% of the population has been 16% of the deaths in Chicago. So to get this testing out, uh, this testing out into our community on the south side of Chicago has absolutely saved lives. There's no doubt about it. It John, I know that, you know, with some of your singing efforts that you've done outside of nursing homes, I mean, it just lifts spirits so much because you're a crooner, man. Yeah. That Sinatra-like songs you got, I mean, oh, that, brings, you guys, you guys. That, that brings a generation of people a certain joy that I don't think any other artist or performer is able to do. Well, uh, you're very kind. There are a lot of people who sing it and do it out there. I'm just blessed to be one of them. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's that uh, thing, you know, when it started in Italy, you saw these people who were singing and, and spreading joy through music. And my mother and father are both born in Italy, met here in Chicago, so I have very deep Italian roots. And my dad should have been an opera singer. He's 84 years old and he, he just grew up during World War II, couldn't, couldn't follow that path and have to go to work. And I got lucky enough in my life to be able to do this for a career. And uh, if I can share it with people, great. You know, some people might hate the way I sound and they're like, shut the heck up. <laughs> other people like it and it's making people happy and that's, that's all you can do. Well, and your, your mental health and being happy is so important in this time because we know how much our body, our brains control our body and our own immune system too. They're directly correlated. Absolutely. I mean, I, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. I have anxiety and depression. For a long time, I felt very sorry for myself. You know, I, I, I've said it on uh, national TV and other places. I've attempted suicide a few years ago. And um, I didn't say it to, 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 for anything of sympathy in, in any matter. The only reason I said it was to help somebody um, not do it. And if it helped one person not commit suicide, then I, I did my goal. Because a lot of people said, how can you do that and make yourself look so, quote, unquote, weak? A lot of people who are very close to me said that wow said, well let me tell you something if i put my vulnerability on my sleeve and i tell somebody this is what my vulnerabilities are if somebody takes advantage of that that's on them that's fine that's fine because life is too short we take it way too seriously the only driving force is love we only learn that when it's too late sometimes if we can learn that while we're still on this planet while we're still living and breathing, that joy, as corny as it may sound, that love, as corny as it may sound, makes people happy, yeah. makes people feel good, respect for others, kindness for others. That's what drives us because I was bullied as a kid. So when I was younger, I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of anger inside of me. I had a lot of anger that I was beat up. I grew up on the South side of Chicago. So I grew up angry and upset. Like I'm sure a lot of kids do that get bullied and get picked on. And that's why I go to schools and talk about that. It sticks with us from the rest of our life from what happens to us when we're, ch we're children. So what we need to do is be kinder to each other. Some people think kindness is a sign of weakness. It's not. It's not. Yeah. I think you sharing is the exact opposite. I think many more people might feel that way too. Oh, I love the you. Exact Thank opposite you. of weakness, but yeah. certainly showing some strength. Um, do, can you share just a little bit of how you picked yourself out of that dark spot? I'm sure there's some other people that may be there now or have found themselves there. Yeah, I have a belt. I don't, it's, it's, I still have the belt in my house. You know, and I, I'm a big guy, so I think if I tried to, you know, <laughs> hang my stuff, I would have fell right through the ceiling or something. You know, I got to laugh at some point. Um, but I had a belt. I grabbed the belt. I put it around my neck. I said, God, I, 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 this was 2018, February of 2018. I said, I just don't want to feel pain anymore. I don't, I don't need to be famous. I don't need to be rich. And I don't, I don't need to keep chasing those things. I don't want it. I just want peace. I, I just yeah. want peace. If I can get peace, I'd be happy. So I sat on that chair after I had that belt around my neck. And the first time I put the belt on, it locked. 
and I, it scared the crap out of me. And I grabbed it. I grabbed it. And I knew at that point, I said, wait a minute, Johnny, you really don't want to kill yourself. But a lot of people who commit suicide accidentally then go through with it, even when they're unsure. And I did it again. I tried it again. And I just said, forget it. And I just started crying. And I called my uh, two sisters who I love dearly, my older sisters. They said, call Dr. Grant. That's my doctor at the University of Chicago. He's amazing. I started going to him twice a week. Then I started when I got a little better, went once a week. And then I started going for ketamine treatments, which really helped me a lot. Larry Work got me involved in ketamine treatments, which has a very high success rate with depression. But at the end of the day, you have to find something inside of yourself. Right. If it's faith or if it's not faith, I don't judge anybody. Whatever you believe or don't believe in is fine. But have compassion for others and have love for others. Well, your and vulnerability you through... That, yeah. It's expressing that vulnerability through your mental health issues is, I think, an important thing for viewers to, to hear. And, and, and Tim, I mean, it's a sim they're different things, but it's similar knowing what you're going through. And I feel like that's why, whether it's through the testing that you're doing or just the information that you're able to share with people in all neighborhoods, you know, knowing your baseline, where we're at and where we're going forward is going to be helpful for everyone, for whether it's physical health or mental health, Tim. Uh, without a doubt, you know, it's it, they go hand in hand and we're at the crossroads of trauma and uh, drug abuse. And, and you have to have strong behavioral health programs when you're at those crossroads. So uh, one thing I do want to say is thank John for his support of this program. You know, as a proud Irish American, it, it kind of hurts me to say it that you've got a great Italian voice and you're one heck of a singer. <laughs> I've seen you a number of times at the Washington Square Foundation when you sing, and it's it's always a pleasure. So thank you for all your support and all your talent, John. Great work. Well, you're, you're too kind, Tim. And what you just said right there about, you know, the behavioral of, of helping each other, that's the key. There's a book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And it says you, you have to live life. To be peaceful in life, you have to live so presently in the moment that you have to immerse yourself in it. And it's a very hard thing to do. And, I, and I, I'm still trying to find that. I want to become enlightened and I want to live in the moment because I'm, I'm, I still don't do that to this day. Mm -hmm. But my old boss, Mike Ditka, told me it in a very simple way. Yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery, today's a gift, that's why they call it the present. You can't do anything outside of the now. Yesterday was today when we, when, when, it, when we were experiencing it. Tomorrow, if we're lucky enough to be here, will again be today. There's an Apollo, when he said it to Rocky in Rocky Three. there is no tomorrow, was the truth. There is no tomorrow. It's always today. It's today. It's today. Don't give up. Keep trying. But we are, are not going to succeed if we keep separating. We have 99.9% .9 of the same DNA, but we try to separate ourselves on this planet. From here, from somebody in Australia, from somebody in South America, to, to Asia, to Africa, to Europe, to everywhere. We share 99%, 99.9% of the same DNA. Why do we keep trying to separate ourselves? A vi the human race is the only race that I can understand that makes a virus that's trying to attack us separate us. Yeah. I just want people to talk, come together, and respect each other's opinion and respect people. Every human being should have that right. That's, that's hey, you said it right there. And our Facebook followers are agreeing. Such an amazing message. Thanks for the courage and thanks for sharing. Uh, before we let you both go, Tim, let's share that information again about the truck and how people can donate Team Test Truck for Roseland Community Hospital. Uh, there's the Facebook information. There's the uh, website as well for how you can uh, help out with the fundraiser and help this truck keep going and help providing people uh, the importance, uh, the message of importance of healthcare accessibility. Thanks, mm -hmm. Tim. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank John. you. And hey, Thank John, you. anytime you want to come down and sing for the Warriors that are working here at Roseland, we'd love to have you down here. I'll do that. You know what? We're going to do that. Let's, let's talk about this and I'll get it done. I'll send it out to my team. We'll get the audio truck out there like we do here out the nursing homes up on the north side and we'll bring it down that way. And you tell me where you want me to sing and we'll do it. Hey, that's a separate awesome. Zoom meeting, guys. This is our Zoom show. You can work your business in another place, okay? All right, John and Tim, thanks so much, guys. And John, come back, please, and sing for us. We're out of time today, but you'll sing for us another time. Promise? Anytime you got it, my brother. Anytime. Thanks, Anytime. John. We appreciate you. That's uh, awesome. Great stuff. And first of all, shout out to his Rocky reference. We can yeah. always use those in life. But also, like, look at the gift that he has of his voice. And, you know, it, we need that, especially mm -hmm. right now. And he was going to remove that gift from the world. And everyone has that gift.
Well, not a, that gift. <laughs> well, a <laughs> gift. A, a gift. Uh, no, no, and just pointing out the fact that we need everyone's gifts. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Great All right, day, guys. Packed fun. Great. Packed fun. We was fast. Woohoo. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Not in for news, not in for fun. I'm dancing. What the lady said. See you guys then. I'm dancing. I'm dancing. <laughs>